Hi, it's Lindy Royer here from Park Meadows Pilates and Physical Therapy with another Pilates tip for you. Today we're going to talk about pelvic mobility exercises. These are exercises where you're tipping the pelvis forward and back or side to side. And it's an exercise that typically is used when we do something like a bridge or doing an exercise like rolling down or rolling over. So here's the spine in its natural alignment, which we've talked about before. It's a double S curve. It's not a straight line. So we have a little inward curve in the lower back. We have a little inward curve in the neck, a slightly outward or even just a flat alignment through the middle of the back with a rib cage attached, otherwise known as the thoracic spine. I'd like you to just look here at the pelvis, which is comprised of three bones, the sacrum and the two ilia bones or pelvic halves on either side. We're going to specifically talk about the sacrum. So here's the sacrum bone, which is this bone that sits between the two halves of the pelvis. So it's shaped like a curve. Um, this is actually the only curve in the spine that we're all born with because it's a solid piece of bone. It's actually a bunch of old fused vertebrae with their ribs attached. So you can see that this bone is not a flat bone. It's actually quite C-curved. When we lay it on its back, you could sort of imagine that it's like a little bowl. Sometimes we describe it as being like a bowl. Or I have a little ball that I cut in half here, these shapes kind of resemble each other. So we're going to use the image of this little half a sphere or half a ball um, to kind of imagine what the sacrum is like as it's moving. So here's the spine with the pelvis and the sacrum, which is part of the pelvis, lying in what we call a natural or neutral position. You can see that there's a little bit of space under the lower back. The back of the middle part of the spine is heavy. This is where the ribs would attach. And then here's the neck with a little bit of the head attached at the top. So as we tip the, the pelvis forward and back, you can see that that actually influences the curves, particularly in the lower back. So the lower back tends to flatten a little bit as we go toward the top of the sacrum or the top of the pelvis. And then the lower back arches a little bit as we roll more toward the tailbone. So just looking at the sacrum all by itself, here's what it looks like, tipping toward the tail and rocking back toward the top. You can imagine again that this movement is the same as using my little half a sphere or half a ball that I've cut in half. So as you're moving your pelvis, use this as an image to roll through the sacrum. Here we are in the neutral and natural spine position. I have a little bit of space under the lower back and I'm just naturally resting in the center of that ball or sacrum bone that we looked at before. So to initiate a pelvic tilt, there are lots of different ways I could do it, but essentially what we want to do is just focus on that natural roll or tilt of the pelvis toward the head and away from the head. What you might think about in this exercise is, am I moving the pelvis from the muscles inside the bowl, which is what we want to do, versus pushing the bowl around from maybe the glutes, the legs, the feet, or even the rib cage. So as much as possible, we're just creating this rocking movement from inside the bowl. Here's what it looks like if I'm doing it from the rib cage. So can you see the difference? of moving the ball from an external area of the body versus from an internal part of the body. Practice this this week and I'll see you next time for another tip.